Oh, Ryan Hollins, former NBA center. I've done some radio with him. He is a great interview. He can be combative. He's a Kyrie Irving fan. What's up, Ryan? How you doing, man? <laughs> What's up, brother? How you been, man? You can't complain. <laughs> Life is good. I, I had the Mavs last night. They come through. I'm assuming you watch the game and you're rooting for your guy, Kyrie Irving, huh? Yeah, absolutely, man. And, and I couldn't be more happy uh, for Kyrie. I got a chance to talk to him uh, when, when we went over there and, and played against the Mavericks. And the one thing that stood out, man, just by seeing Kyrie and from what I know, I, I had him his rookie year. He's happy. And uh, Mark Cuban and Nico and Jay Kidd and those guys, they've embraced Kyrie. And for him, you know, most of us ball players say, you know, it's basketball or nothing, man. Basketball is everything. Kyrie's like, I want to be happy. I want to be a good person. I want to serve uh, my fellow man. And then basketball is just something I really love and I'm great and I'm good at. And for him, it's the people around him. And he's been embraced in Dallas. Yeah, do you feel like he's a different person? I know it's we don't totally know these guys, what they're going through off the court, but it seems like he's had some rocky stops in Boston, clearly in Brooklyn, and now he's – he's. is this more about him maturing or is this like the right supporting cast in Dallas in front office? They've, they've got a history with him. They know him well. He's embraced his role and knows who he is. So when he's looking at Luka Doncic – it's different than looking at James Harden and Kevin Durant as peers, as equals, or LeBron James and saying, hey, man, I'm, I'm the guy who hit the big shot, bro. He looks at Luka, and Luka says, Kyrie, you've been here before. You've done this. Teach me how to do this. P.J. Washington and those guys are saying, Kyrie, you're the OG in the room, okay? Uh, what do we need to do better defensively? How do we execute? How do we come through in these moments? And Kyrie, we heard him last night uh, uh, during his interview say, hey, man, I, I, I want to win. I don't want to go home. You know, I think I've taken these things for granted. And Kyrie has some of the – it's the good problem to have. And moments, the game has come too easy for Kyrie. So when you're that good, I was never that good. I knew I had to work hard. When you're that good, you have to remember to work hard, to use your teammates, to play in the system. So these are all the things that Kyrie's coming around full circle in his career to take part of, or else he'll be going home early, and he doesn't want to be a part of that. Struggle with Ryan Hollins, Fox Sports Radio. Ryan, uh, we watched Rudy Gobert really struggle last night in that drop coverage. Luka just annihilated him. And listen, I remember Luka was picking on him back when he was in Utah, and the Mavs knocked him out of the playoffs. I didn't see anything different. Can Minnesota do anything differently against the Luka pick and roll? I don't. Do they blitz Luka? Do they? I don't know. Maybe go Nas Reed over Gobert because he's a little more athletic. We saw Nas trying to guard him like 25 feet from the hoop. Gobert ain't doing that. Well, any thoughts on how Minnesota can adjust here? So remember, this is game one. And the one thing, this is this is chestnut checkers. All right, Jay, this is chestnut checkers. P.J. Washington, okay, and, and, and Jones Jr., they showed you, they showed Oklahoma City, if you take away the lob, we will hit the three. So now they're going to say, we're going to take away the lob. You guys have to hit the threes. And let's see if you're in rhythm because we kept you game one out of rhythm and we didn't give up all those three-pointers. I think Dallas only hit, what, six or seven three-pointers yeah. for the entire game, but they got rimmed. Then the third adjustment, I think what you're saying is you're going to switch, and then this is where Dallas becomes dangerous because you got Gobert or Nas Reed or, or Kat guarding who? Luka and Kyrie on the perimeter. So that's what makes it uh, a dangerous. And OKC was the biggest headache because they could do what? They could go out and switch. They were able to switch with Dallas. So now you're in a situation where you have to pick your poison. So to answer what you're going to have to say, they're going to take away lob likely in the next game. The next adjustment may be a blitz. The next adjustment is going to be a switch. And these adjustments in the playoffs could come by quarter by quarter. It can't be that uh, yeah. uh, detailed in the playoffs. Mm. Uh, I, I said something on social media that got people ticked off. I said, I think Luca's got the biggest bag in NBA history. I mean, you just watch him. He can beat you with the mid-range, the three, the post-up. The vision is incredible. And listen, I know last round, Luke Dort is a tough matchup, really good defender. He had no chance against Luca. Foul trouble every game. Jaden McDaniel, second team all defense. He's too skinny. Luca just bodies him in the post. I don't know how you stop this guy. I do believe he will be in the discussion for one of the best players in the history of the sport. I mean, he's 25, I believe, and he's been on like five all NBA teams. Ryan, Luka Doncic, unstoppable, right? 
unstoppable. I'll give you that. He may not have the best bag on his team. Kyrie nah. Irving, as far as bag and moves and getting to your spots, I don't know if we take them above, above Kyrie, but I do agree with you. Um, what was special about Luka, and I saw this coming. I don't know how the kid wasn't the first pick uh, uh, in the NBA draft. And the thing about Luka is that he does beat you in an array of different places. And even worse, he does it in slow motion. He does it with a bad knee. The young bull is going to be on the injury report every single <laughs> night. But he takes his time, and you don't realize how big he is. So he's a, he's a mix of a Larry Bird and James Harden. He takes his time. He's in slow motion. He's big. He's going to trash talk with you. And when he's rolling, man, he, he's seemingly literally unstoppable because it's not like those small guards that zip past you. He takes it, takes his time. He puts you in jail. He gets in that mid-range, and he can shoot right over you. All right, let's go macro, big picture in the league now. Obviously, the Lakers, a huge talking point with their coaching situation. Where, where are you on the J.J. Redick uh, potential hire, this nonsense that he's maybe the next Pat Riley? I mean, listen, Hollins, people are going crazy out here in L.A. What, what are you hearing? I'm all in with, with, with J.J. Redick. Uh, and, and the reason is we forget. You act like Steve Kerr didn't do this at a very high level. And also, you're not going to put J.J. Redick in a situation his first time as head coach and not have some veteran coaches, some former head coaches. Hey, maybe J.B. Bickerstaff is a name that maybe could go and join the Lakers that can go and teach J.J. some of the little things that he may not know. But the biggest thing for J.J. that I will challenge him on if he gets the job, your job is to relate to the players and even more so relate to your stars. What's he doing? Relatable with LeBron James. He's got LeBron's respect. And we've seen on his their, their podcast, which is it's a new NBA, man. It's a new media, okay? Coach and player, they might run the podcast during the season. You never know. But at the end of the day, he's got LeBron's respect, and he can call out LeBron. And LeBron uh, uh, re responds best when people can do that. The only other head coach that would be in play, in my mind, uh, it would, would be Tyron Lue. And if it's not going to be Tyron Lue, I think at this moment, you have to go with J.J. Redick. I play with J.J. He knows the game. He's thorough. And the biggest challenge for him is to be relatable, connectable, and also being able to call guys out in that locker room. And when I played with J.J., he had no problems calling guys out. Yeah. Um, all right. So, listen, this has kind of flown under the radar here the last 24 hours because the conference finals are happening. But the All-NBA teams were announced. And Shea Gilgis Alexander made it. He's now eligible for the Supermax extension. Uh, Ryan, I don't know if you saw this, but per the numbers, SGA is going to be making $81 million potentially in, a, in like 2029 or something. $81 million, okay? Listen, I'm not looking at anybody's pockets. More power to the people. Get that paper. Get that. <laughs> stack that paper. $81 million. What's the perception going to be? Or does it? do you just not? Who cares? 81 mil for SGA who's – I don't – is he a top five player in the league? I, I don't think so. But he's very, very good, obviously. Hollins, what, what are we doing? 81 mil? He, what are you talking about? He was an MVP candidate this year. Oh, and, and the one thing, uh, you, we're, we're, you want to know what the players think, he has league-wide respect yeah. amongst the players. He's got the swagger, he brings it, and he has a game to back it up. We just got done talking about who? Luka Doncic. You put Luka on the platform and said Luka is going to be one of the best ever, maybe the best bag you've ever seen. Shea Gilgis Alexander is in the Luka Doncic conversation for how young he is, his team's success. They, For God's sakes, they're supposed to be rebuilding right now. He's so good that they were the number one, what were they, number one and number two uh, in, in the Western Conference. So for Shea Gilgis Alexander, I don't think any players or anybody's going to have a question about the money that he's going to be making. You see he's a young talent. And even more so, hey, the Clippers are probably looking at back and saying, man, we traded Shea away as great as Paul George is. That looks like an obscene move to make and sent all your draft capital over there. So um, at the end of the day, Shea's deserving of that contract. I'm happy for these guys getting money. And McIntyre, don't you ever question money again, well, man. What's wrong with you, man? So here's the big picture. <laughs> again, I'm happy for Shea and everybody. <laughs> but, Ryan, let's be realistic, okay? The NBA did not like the super team era. They don't like guys hopping around. SGA and OKC, he's not n turning that down to leave and go somewhere else, right? He's he's definitely going to stay in OKC. So it seems to me like they're trying to prevent the super teams from happening. I thought the super team era was amazing. Did you not think so? Me personally, I loved it. Um, yeah. I like the parody that we have in the NBA. But again, you cannot cry about 
uh, things going on. And I want to throw this out. As you talk about super teams, look, man, Oklahoma City, they're playing... Uh, Sam Presley's the GOAT right now for what he's doing. It's like they're playing NBA 2K when you go out and you juice your teams and you get everybody. What if... They went out and they got Paul George. No. They went and acquired a, a Paul George. Hey, what if Kevin Durant wants to get his LeBron James on and says, man, I got a shot to go to Oklahoma City and win. So OKC is poised to put together a super team. I love their culture that they built. And when you win a championship, it's not just the stars. You got to have a star mixed with culture. Oklahoma City has culture right now. They got young stars. Everybody who's going into, into that system is eating. They're playing well. They're developing. And even more so, they're having fun. And the one thing I love about Shea, and I got to cover him his rookie year with the Clippers, is he is a down-to-earth. He's the same guy. And even with the money, you're not fearful as an organization that he's going to just devour the room. With all of his success, he's the same guy, and he has embraced his teammates and the culture there in OKC. And it may really be a desirable place to play. So, hey, man, I wouldn't be mad if KD made that move. I wouldn't be mad if Paul George said, hey, man, they treat her me right in OKC. I wouldn't mind going back there. Oh, come on. Ryan Hollins, it, look at you dropping bombs on the way out the door so I can't respond. <laughs> Catch Ryan Hollins Sundays with Mike Harmon, Fox Sports Radio, 9 a.m. to noon. Good stuff, Ryan. Have a great holiday weekend, man. All right, brother. Talk soon, man. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Ryan. Hi, everybody. It's me, Uncle Colin. Subscribe here to get the latest from the herd, including exclusive behind-the-scenes videos and more wherever you may be, however you may be watching. Thanks again for making us part of your day.